So what the heck am I supposed to name my webcomic exactly? Okay, so obviously when it comes to naming your comic, there aren't any real rules. Um, name it whatever you think is best. There, there's no stopping you from naming it whatever you want. However, having named a few comics by now and a few projects, uh, there are some things that you're going to want to keep in mind, especially when you're looking into having some any sort of web presence. Uh, the first and foremost one that I totally didn't realize until taking a few courses in like SEO and other social media BS was uh, you want a name that is searchable. You want to make a name that people can type into a search engine and get the the correct thing out of. And, and why do you want that? Well, like I just said, you want your name to be easy to return to. Most people don't type in URLs these days. I, I, I don't know many people who do. I mean, I don't. I usually just Google something and then go to the site afterwards, or it's already in my, like, um, recommended because I go to the site so much. However, well, back on topic, when people have the thought of like, like when people have recognized you before and they learn about your comics, you want them to have the thought, oh, I should go read that comic that was mentioned to me at a convention or, oh, my friend's comic, I should check them out or, wow, what was that comic's name exactly? When, when they do have that whim, you want them to easily access the comic. Um, if you make it even a little bit hard, the whim will pass and they'll go off to another thing. Um, another reason is for your own sake that you want it to be like easy to search because if it isn't easy to search your comic specifically, it's really hard to see if anyone's talking about it online or see if there's any fan art that shy fans have posted and haven't added you with or haven't linked to um, your comic directly. And even if they have, no one's clicked the link and therefore you you can't find it by looking in your analytics. It's, it's a whole mess. Um, but if you have a really easy to search name, you can see all the discussion that's going around about your comic, which is cool. So with all that in mind, how do you make something searchable? Well, first thing, you want something unique, but something not so unique that it's easy to still type. I've seen a lot of people make up words or pick really obscure, difficult words, and, and that's fine. But when you make the word too big or too cumbersome or too just different in how it's spelled, while you will definitely own the search term when people type it in, sometimes people are going to type it in wrong and maybe a lot of times they might type it in wrong. And if you aren't popular enough in the searches, uh, Google's not going to do that really nice thing where it says, hey, I think you meant this thing. They, they'll probably get redirected to something else. So don't make it too cumbersome and too difficult to type. Instead, focus on combining simple words and phrases rather than making up a very unique word. You don't have to have the most dominant of search terms ever. Like, you don't have to, like, fight for the very top of a very um, already competitive search term. Uh, you want to just win in a very direct phrase, okay? So basically, when you search up your the title that you want, you want nothing huge to come up, and you especially don't want anything huge to come up when you type in your t title plus the word comic or webcomic. Basically, you don't want um, another comic that <laughs> is named the same as you. In other words, you don't want to name your comic The Magpie since there's already a supervillain called The Magpie, and whenever someone types in the word The Magpie comic, they're gonna get the villain from Batman and they're not gonna get your webcomic. Um, speaking from experience here, another thing you want to do when you're searching up these terms and searching to see how easy it is to find your comic, you want to search in incognito mode because you don't want to have your search history um, obscuring what like the the base level is. You know, because if you're someone who looks at indie comics a lot, Google might be nicer to you. It's nicer to me because it knows that I I am linked to my site, so it'll always show me my site when I search things up, or at least I look it up a lot. So eh. either way, N instead of naming it the Magpie, name it something like Pretty Mouth. It's really easy to spell Pretty Mouth, and 
Uh, the only other things associated with Pretty Mouth are a quote and an indie band, so when you type in Pretty Mouth comic, you're gonna get my comic, you're not gonna get any other BS surrounding it. And if you see an indie band, you're gonna be like, well, that's not the comic I was looking for, but oh look, the, the comic's right here. And also, definitely do not name your webcomic Sovereign, because there's already tons of webcomics called Sovereign. Not even just comics, there's like tons of comics named web <laughs> named sovereign and there's kinds of uh comics that have just the word sovereign it needs to be unique enough um because i'm battling for the phrase um sovereign comic so that is hard and i'm not gonna win that one so yes make sure to consider searchability when you are making up the name of your type uh, the name of your comic. When I was making the Scourge of Nine Point, I considered a lot of names, but I ultimately chose the title with the word Nine Point in it because it was easy to spell and remember. Even as a shortened title, it still owns the search. Like, Nine Point is mine. Um, nine Point without a space. But like, yeah. So even when they shorten my comic to nine point comic, they're going to find it. it. They don't have to type in the Scourge of Nine Point, but I also have the Scourge of Nine Point, which also really helps when you are thinking about Twitter, too, and creating hashtags where people can find your comic. Another thing to consider. Uh, all right. Uh, what else is there to think about in general about uh, naming a comic? Um Again, titles, in the case of a webcomic, have a lot to do with marketing. Hell, titles in general have a ton to do with marketing. I have talked to quite a few writers, and a lot of the times, they do not have a pick of what their book is titled at all. Um, the marketing par department decides on that, much like the marketing department will decide on a cover. So yes, titles are a lot about marketing. Um, so when you pick a title, it should say something about your work. Specifically, it should say something about your genre. Uh, genre titles have tropes, and studying the tropes are important, especially if you are in a very specific genre. You want to be able to cater to people that like this genre. So back on the topic of The Scourge of Nine Point, the goal was to make a name that feels epic fantasy. So what did we do? We looked up popular books in the genre and we studied and we studied how they are named. So we looked at The Lord of the Rings, The Song of Ice and Fire, The Way of Kings. There's obvious exceptions to um, some of the rules laid out in these titles, of course. But when you look at fantasy, there is a typical cadence that comes to the titles. And while exceptions exist, I didn't really have a reason to be a outlier. So I I looked into other elements uh, that are included in fantasy, kind of words that sound fantasy, like empire, scourge, etc. And I ended up settling on a name that felt fantasy, but also felt unique and kind of adhered to the typical naming scheme. The same is true of the magpie, except in the in that case I looked at horror titles. Horror titles tend to be on the short and pithy side, though there's quite a lot of them that are longer, especially um, Lovecraftian ones, which is technically the genre I'm looking at, but I'm also closer on the um, thriller side, uh, thriller noir side, so there are a lot of those pithy thriller titles, Gone Girl and those things. Um, so yeah, I looked a lot in that side of the aisle of um, mystery, thriller, and horror, which again, pithy kind of short titles. And then I looked at, like, you know, the palette of words you get to choose. Much like with fantasy, where there's definitely words that sound fantasy, there are words that sound horror. There are words that sound spoopy, that sound thrilling. I picked a spoopy bird, and it's also a main character, which is perfectly fine. A lot of horrors also have just, like, girl names for the title. That's another thing you might notice. I don't know. It's one part of marketing, and I did not consider the searchability at all, which was a mistake on my part. As I was saying about picking a title that fits your genre, this goes well with another point that is beyond genre and beyond marketing. The title should speak to your book. Uh, it should speak to your webcomic, and it should speak to it very specifically. In the case of Magpie, I wanted a short name because uh, the story is about loneliness, about cold, about absence. 
a long kind of um, poetic phrase title might fit the magpie as a character, but it doesn't really fit uh, the story as a whole, in my opinion. And The Scourge of Nine Point is long, and the title takes on many different meanings as the story progresses. So, you know, you also have to consider what the story means and um, whether the title feels right for you. And, like, titles are hard. The The last word of advice I have on this is to kind of just pick one. Whenever I'm stuck, I make a list of, like, maybe 30, 50 titles, and they can be super similar or they can be super far apart, and then I just pick one. You can spend months and months agonizing over what is the perfect title for your book, but in the end, this isn't a science. You're not gonna, like, th- there's no definite for sure correct title for your book so just pick one and instead of having those months where you agonize over choosing one just have a month where you grow and accept the ones that you have picked and I can assure you that the name will grow on you and after a year of doing your comic like you won't be able to think of it as anything else (laughs) though I guess that's a lie because I still call nine point calico sometimes which is not a name I picked because calico doesn't really feel uh fantasy (laughs) <laughs> nine points a lot more um nine point empire is fantasy and such yeah marketing decisions it's hard um if you want to check out my comics you can do so the links are in the description below the scourge of nine point is not available online for free it is only available in our etsy and on our gumroad in both physical and ebook formats um totally recommend that you read it super cute book I like selling books. I like packaging them up all pretty for people. It's cool by me. Um, good luck naming all of your comics. And thank you all for like hanging out in the Discord with me. It's been super cool. And, oh, right, um, Monday is our deadline for our raffle. You can actually win some cool comic books and um, the uh, Christmas card that we made yesterday. Yeah, I totally recommend that you try it. You just gotta make a little bit of fan art related to anything McCann Gray, give it a bit of a holiday spin, and post it in our Discord or send it to us via social media. And, yeah, that's it. That's cool. Uh, Good luck. It's just a raffle, so don't worry about being the best artist there ever was. Okay? Alright, I'm gonna go edit this video. It took me longer than a chef to get working today. Oh dear.